Hey, hey, Waffle Gang, I do hope you are well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some more R slash Jamada Butthole. And if you love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting that like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too, as it all really does help out the channel. And let's just crack straight on with today's first story. Now, today's first story comes from Own Ingenuity. 8648 who says, am I the arsehole for taking my friend to court after she kicked me out of the bridal party for cutting my hair? And of course, again, comes with an update. For my friend's three day wedding, I had to buy three different dresses, including alterations and specific shoes, which totaled over $700. She also wanted specific hairstyles for each day. Unfortunately, starting in March, my hair started to deteriorate. Due to health reasons, my hair was falling out in chunks and in May, I made the difficult decision to cut my hair. I told the bride about my decision two weeks before the wedding and she didn't say anything bad. The following week, she came over to my house and when she was about to leave, she brought up that she was concerned about my haircut and I told her it would look good even though I wouldn't be in uniform with the other bridesmaids. The following day, I received this message. After our recent conversations, I'd like to remind you of my boundaries. I've been very accommodating and graceful, but I can't allow you to disrespect me. As you know, my wedding has been something I've dreamt of for many years. Husband and I have invested a lot of money into the video and photos of this day. And as we reflect on this day in the future, we want to see our vision reflected in the memories. Since I asked each of you to be my bridesmaid in 2019, I've been very clear and very communicative in my request. The timing of your decision to cut your hair and not income in advance is very upsetting to me. I would have felt respected if you had communicated with me more than a week prior to the wedding. So we could have worked together to find a collaborative solution. Your inconsistencies have concerned me. And while I sympathize with your health concerns, I'm not willing to compromise my vision to accommodate you or anyone else when you inform me in advance and could have found a better solution. Since this is something you can no longer fully commit to, I need you to please step down from participating in my wedding. This was three days before the wedding. I immediately sent her and her husband an invoice asking them to reimburse for the dresses and shoes, keeping in mind that one of the dresses is still in her possession and even though I paid for it. Neither of them replied and so I decided to take it to court. I was told I was inconsistent and selfish after I spent the past two weeks helping her plan the wedding shower. I worked with another bridesmaid to surprise her with a bridal shower after our bachelorette trip had to be canceled. I spent hours helping her out with wedding details. When she asked me to help her turn up before the wedding, I sent her a personalized workout program and even went with her to the gym to show her the ropes. When I agreed to be her bridesmaid, I was more than willing to oblige with what she had asked, even if at times it was a lot of time and money. So, am I the arsehole for taking her to court because she kicked me out for cutting my hair? And this is just no friend. A friend doesn't treat someone else like that who knows of your health concerns. I could honestly say if I was in the bride's shoes and my friend came up to me and they was informing me that they had to cut their hair off because of their health concerns, my concerns would be more about their health and how they're feeling than my wedding at that moment because that's what friends do. After hearing of a friend's health concerns, you don't message him saying, I can't allow you to disrespect me, talking about boundaries and respect when none has been shown towards OP in this. Absolute bullshit. And let's not forget the time and love OP herself has put into this wedding as well, helping her with like the gym plan and helping her with a bachelorette, spending $700 on dresses and alterations themselves to get involved in her wedding. And still, gets treated like that is absolute madness. But Confident Broccoli says, this is not a friend. It's a narcissistic entitled bridezilla. I wouldn't go to the wedding and I'd have nothing to do with her indefinitely. She's shown you who she really is, a selfish person lacking empathy. She rejected you as soon as she didn't need you. Danny Caps fan says, wow, what a bridezilla. If she really sympathized with your health concerns, she wouldn't care that you had to cut your hair. Not to mention a three day wedding with three dresses and three hairstyles. Yikes, another sign of a bridezilla, saying she's dreamt of the perfect wedding since she was a little girl. We even told her you needed to cut your hair because of your health issues and she decides three days before the wedding to kick you out of the bridal party. I don't blame you for suing. You're not inconsistent and selfish. She is not the arsehole. 
A deleted user says not the asshole. Best of luck with the court case, but like others, I'm not sure it'd be worth the aggro. I'd certainly like to see you win though. Personally, I'd just let it go. Put it down to a bad experience and never deal with them again. Violet says not the asshole. She showed no decent response to your health issue and then dumped you from the wedding party for having forked out for not one, but three different dresses. And one more from Pink Kitty Toe Beans who says, great name, she doesn't sound like much of a friend. I don't know the history of your friendship, so I could be wrong, but she sounds petty, selfish, and like she is using you. If one of my bridesmaids from my wedding had health issues that were causing her to lose her hair, my stupid hair code for the wedding would be the last thing on my mind. A different style every day. This girl needs a wake-up call. There are much bigger things going on in the world right now than her little wedding. The least she could do is try to be a bit understanding if she's going to demand everyone in the party spend upwards of $700. Yikes. If you didn't take her to court, you could kiss that money goodbye for good. You did the right thing. Absolutely not the asshole, and this chick sucks. OP replies to that one saying, Honestly, our friendship suffered a few years back because she did something that was very, very selfish, and we didn't speak for almost a year, and she apologized. I chose to forgive her and move forward, but in hindsight, I should have been on the lookout for more red flags. So now let's move on to the update to find out what happened next. And the update came months later. This, this has been a long time coming. I've had a lot of people reach out to me asking what the results of the case have been. Unfortunately, I could no longer post comments on my previous post as well. I figured I would wait until everything was done to update everyone all at once. In December 2021, I got the notification that a court date had been set for February 7th, 2022. It would be virtual and since it's small claims, we would represent ourselves. I began gathering my evidence and created a virtual file, which I shared with the court and her seven days before the hearing. On the day, she did show up. We were given the chance to settle, but that was unsuccessful. When we returned to the hearing, I found out she also had made a virtual file with her evidence, but never shared it with me. The court then made her share it in. What a surprise I had. She had copied my entire format for presenting evidence. Keep in mind, this is a format I created. She didn't even have the decency or brain cells to make something up herself. The hearing proceeded and we were both given a chance to share our side. I won't go into the details of it, but it probably took 10 to 15 minutes. In my state, they do not give the verdict right away and it can take up to 90 days. And so I waited and waited and waited and waited. Then yesterday, May 5th, almost 90 days after, I got a verdict, I won. She had been ordered to pay me the total of $808.94 for the dresses and shoes. I have to return two dresses and shoes I have to her. The verdict goes into effect May 30th. I don't see her appealing it, or fingers crossed she doesn't. All in all, I am very happy with the outcome and so ready to close this chapter. Thank you everyone has been so invested in this with me. Hope this was the season finale that you were looking forward to. P.S. My hair and health are doing much better. My three bald spots are growing again and I couldn't be happier. And that happy ending there, especially hearing about her health and stuff is absolutely amazing to hear. I'm so, so happy for Opie as well. And that they won the court case. They got what they deserved in the end. And it would have been great to see the bridezilla's face in that moment that she has to pay the money back. And another thing that was going through my mind whilst I was reading the first one is like, what do her friends think? Do the other bridesmaids know about the situation? What do they think about bride now that they've treated one of their friends like this who's going through health concerns and treats them shitty? And I really don't understand the level of entitlement some of these stories that we go to, the absolute madness that happens, that you dictate everything about their appearance, the way that they have to be. It's just like, surely at your wedding, all you want is the people that you love and care about surrounding you and everyone to be happy and they create the best pictures, they create the best videos, people being natural and loving towards one another. Oh, dearie, dearie me. <laughs> but what do you guys make of this one? I'm very, very happy with the outcome. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and let's move on to another story. And our next story is regarding a little bit of HOA neighbor drama, and it comes with an update as well. It's titled HOA being difficult because I host support group meetings in my own home. For the last 18 years, I've been a member and an organizer of a group for trauma survivors. 
The room we were using for our meetings in a nearby church was recently flooded and badly damaged, and I haven't been able to find another suitable room for our meetings due to the pandemic. Not wanting the group members to be deprived of an important resource, I decided to host some meetings in my basement or in a secluded area of my garden with a reduced number of attendees. We respect social distancing rules, wear masks, sanitize our hands and everything. This came to the knowledge of the HOA board. A few weeks ago, some HOA board members knocked on my door and told me they weren't pleased with this at all. They told me that people in the neighborhood feel unsafe knowing that drug addicts gather at my house. I told them that our support group is not for people fighting addiction, or maybe some of them are, but they don't tell me, but for trauma survivors, and this would stop as soon as we could go back to the church. They weren't convinced and called me inconsiderate and asked me to stop. I didn't because I consider that I have a right to invite people at my house and talk to them. Yesterday, I received a strongly worded letter from the HOA demanding that I stop inviting drug addicts to gather at my house because it puts everyone in danger and they're not the kind of people we want in the neighborhood. They said I had a chance to make things right but didn't, so they're fining me $500. They will fine me for every meeting I organize from now on and threaten me with a lien on my house if I don't pay the fines. The reason they invoke is that our meetings are breaching the peace of the neighborhood and making people unsafe. This is completely untrue. Our meetings are six to seven people max. We don't make noise, we don't drink. People park on my driveway or on illegal spots in the street. We cause absolutely no disturbance. I check the HOA rules and I can't seem to find one which I would be breaking. Does the HOA have any right to stop me from organizing meetings at my house? I don't see how our support group is any different from having a few guests at my house. The HOA is run by people who don't seem to know what they are doing, and I think they'd stop harassing me if I had real legal arguments to oppose. Thank you for your advice. Now, I won't get into any of the legalities of this, but I'm sure they'd be covered in the comments in just a moment, and my advice would be pretty much void anyway. And I know it's not all HOAs. Everyone always tells me that, you know, they're part of an HOA and it's absolutely normal, because we're always going to hear the worst of the worst of most situations on these subreddits. But whenever we cover them, they always sound like little cults, don't they? Like little people peeping out their windows all the time, just looking for anything they can latch onto. Oh, look, Jeffrey's left his bin out today for five minutes. Find him, find him. People walking up and down the street with rulers measuring the length of the grass. And if they see a yellow patch on the grass, that's a fine. And again, I know it's these subreddits, but it just makes it sound like such a horrible way to live that, you know, you always have to be worried that you might get a fine out of nowhere because someone's telling on you or something like that over something completely petty. But before we go to the update, Funk Doctor says this is complicated and a firm answer would probably require a detailed reading of your HOA's CC and R's by a lawyer, but there's a decent chance they can do this. The fact that the HOA is run by people who don't seem to know what they're doing is largely irrelevant. Many HOA rules are written in such a way to exclude just the sort of activities you are engaged in, namely bringing other people into the neighborhood on a regular basis. I could run through a list of possible reasons they'll feed you. It's a business run out of a home, even though you don't get paid. It's an unlicensed social club. You can't prove that you're really doing social distancing, etc. But at the end of the day, they don't want undesirables with no clear link to a resident coming regularly into their space, and they will throw fines at you until you stop. You would need a lawyer to get a firm answer though. OP replied saying, yes, I might have to stop the meetings and it's what really saddens me. Some members have a hard time dealing with the added stress from the pandemic and our meetings provide needed relief. I don't even want to go to court or anything. I just want to have the possibility to help people who need it and don't bother anyone. A deleted user says you need a lawyer who can look over your HOA contract and give you concrete advice. A letter from a lawyer to the HOA will go a lot further than you attempting to reason with these morons. BCP says, what rules do they say you're violating? Request a hearing and refute their claims. Ultimately, it is possible the HOA can restrict this in a number of ways. Limiting guest parking, not allowing non-residential use, etc. But whether or not you are violating the rules as they are written depends on the specific rules. An OP reply saying, they don't even say what rules I'm supposed to be breaking. Everything is very vague which makes me think that they have no idea what they are doing. Someone must have spread the rumor that we are addicts and it scared them. They are older people who always lived in a quiet neighborhood and are scared of everyone. And so let's move on to the update to find out what happened next. 
So the update says, I wrote back to the HOA to dispute the fines and sent a polite but firm letter asking them to show me precisely which rule I'm supposed to be breaking. As I was advised by commenters in here, I also pretended that I feel insulted that they're calling me and the group members drug addicts. I felt bad doing so because I know that addiction is a disease and not a sin or whatever, and that I would raise hell because of this and call a lawyer. As a result, the president of the HOA called me and basically confirmed that they haven't found a specific rule I would be breaking, but it was more of a general feeling people had, that I was making them uncomfortable and that shouldn't go on. I asked why they were uncomfortable, so he talked about the fact that they think I'm letting drug addicts gather at my home and that would bring crime to the neighborhood. I explained again that the support group is not about addiction and the members are not drug addicts and the president said he knew, but some homeowners have trouble accepting it. He confirmed, as I suspected, that there are other things they have trouble accepting about me and it's not about drugs. Then I tried my luck a little by pretending that what they are doing amounts to discrimination against people who need mental health support and they were infringing on my right to peacefully enjoy my property and was adamant that I wouldn't pay a cent in fines. He said that I seemed passionate about the argument and he doesn't want to be involved in a legal dispute over this. So he came to an agreement that I would move as many meetings as possible online and only have people at my place when there was no other way, which makes sense with COVID times anyway. In return, the HOA will drop their claim and leave me alone. I haven't heard about them again, so I guess I'm fine. Thanks for everyone's good advice. And whilst this one didn't get any more dramatic and they didn't go to court or anything like that, I still feel sort of disappointed that the HOA in some ways got their way. Because for now, OP's gonna take these meetings online, but if there ever does come a time, you know, an emergency where he needs to have these people at the house, they will complain again. There is no doubt about it. And I just feel like, you know, he was getting somewhere with the HOA president in some ways. And I thought that maybe the HOA could send a, I don't know, did they send newsletters or phone around and let them know the situation that these are people in need through COVID times and these meetings are really helping them. And surely from a human to human point of view, you could see that's a good thing for people. Ah, <sighs> bloody hell. Anyway, let's move on to another story. And our next story comes from Classic Standard 7389 who asks, am I the asshole for not doing anything when my husband chased his parents out of our house? Context, me, female 35 and husband 35 met 10 years ago at a mutual friend's wedding. When we were starting into the relationship, I told him that since I'm young, I've always wanted to adopt children with the person I'm getting married to. And if he didn't want that, then it would be best for us to not be together. He just smiled, kissed my forehead and wholeheartedly agreed to it. He proposed to me three years into our relationship and we happily got married a year later. Two years after we got married, we decided it would be the right time to go ahead with the plan and adopt a child. We were going to adopt one child, but things happened and we ended up adopting a pair of twins who lost their parents in an accident. My husband and I could not bear to separate the siblings and we felt a close bond with the kids after spending some time with them. They eventually became the very reason we live and love them with all our heart. Last year, I got pregnant and gave birth to my biological child in late January this year. We have this tradition called the 100 day celebration. So we invited all our relatives to the house in the evening for a ceremony. Of course, my mother-in-law and father-in-law came too. She never once visited when we adopted our first two children, but she was always not against us adopting. So we didn't really care much. Before you guys ask why we didn't have a welcome ceremony for our older two children, we slowly introduced them to our family members so they wouldn't feel overwhelmed. After the ceremony, both mother-in-law and father-in-law pulled husband and I aside to ask questions that had my blood boiling. I've never been this angry in my whole life. The question being, now that you have your own child, do you still want to keep those two kids? I mean, one of them is disabled. Do you think you will have time for your own child? Don't you think you should focus more on your own child? And before I could react, my husband yelled at them. The sheer loudness shocked me. I've never seen him that angry in my life. He told his mother that all three are his children to get the fuck out of the house and to never come back. The love of my life was literally trembling with anger. They left without saying another word, probably from the shock too. My husband took both his kids back to our room, hugged them and cried. After everyone, we called it a night. My mother-in-law called me and asked why I hadn't done anything to prevent my husband from chasing them out. I told her he did the right thing. If my parents had said the same thing, I would have done the same thing. 
She said I was an asshole for not stopping him and that I was pitting him against her. I cut the call and went back to the room where my husband was just hugging the children, pecked him and fell asleep beside him. I'm so proud of my husband, but on the other side, am I the asshole for not stopping him? Now, as always, when it comes to these stories, I try to put my feet in the person's shoes and I try to put my feet into the parent's shoes in this. And can you imagine going up to a couple and saying what they said? Now you have your own child. Do you want to keep those two kids? What the hell? Who thinks like that? My bloody word. And of course, it's going to be 100% not the arsehole in this situation. In fact, you'd be the arsehole if you did stop him. But Keegan says, not the arsehole. First of all, he is responsible for his own behavior and it's not your job to monitor and correct him. Second, he was right. A boss says, not the arsehole, and neither is your husband. When relatives become cartoons of ignorance and poison in your family, boot them out. Your husband can declare a cooling off period or something, but it seems that their words were premeditated and had time to think this through and still chose the most hurtful course of action possible. Condescending, callous, clueless, and cold. Enjoy your family of five and forget them. Stubborn Panda says, not the asshole at all. This post was a wild ride. Your husband kissing your forehead when you brought up adoption and your description of your adopted twins being the very reason we live are the sweetest things and reading what your mother-in-law said had my blood boiling. Your mother-in-law asked if you still wanted to keep your children. I'm baffled that she thought you would stand up for her after she said something so heartless. I'm proud of your husband too and I hope he stays true to his comments and that she should never come back. All three of your kids are lucky to have you both. And one more from File Doesn't Exist who says not the arsehole. If you allow them back into your lives, they will favor your bio child over your adopted children. Don't let them. Also consider holding a 100 day celebration belated for your adopted children. Kids always notice this and are hyper aware of the differences in treatment. Maybe a 100 month celebration. Call it anything you want. And now I'm going to turn this one to you guys. What do you guys make of this situation? How would you react if you was OP? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, just a huge thank you for spending your time with me today. Getting involved in the stories, your love, support, and time always means the absolute world to me. And so many people getting involved on Twitter just recently, and I absolutely love to see it. So thank you so much, and I will see you in the next one. Take care, guys. Much love. Wake up, get up, stretch my legs. Some breakfast, milk and eggs Brush my teeth up, watch my face Throw my clothes on, start my day Wake up, I can smell the smoke from the bacon Let's go, see the sun shining from the windows Okay, I know that today